What are you exactly. running? What's your pistol you're running, and why? Uh, I showed it to him briefly. That's a Smith and Wesson, railed. There's the number right there. I'll annotate it. Rocking a Kimber 10 round magazine to start off with. This Smith and Wesson 1911 stainless steel variety with a rail. It's going to be a workhorse in the Nut and Fancy project. Yeah, it's a good looking gun. Love it. Smith & Wesson 1911, model 108, 303, stainless steel with a rail, which is pretty low profile. Shooting steel out in the desert. Alright, on to the hostage. Five shots. In 2010, I set out to find some of the best American-made high-value 1911s out there. My research led me right to Smith & Wesson. Previously reviewed in the Nut & Fancy Project, TMP for short, so that's a 1911 PD full-sized scanium frame 1911 by Smith. Love that gun. Heavily tested here in TMP. High marks in pretty much all areas. Check out the review if you're interested. I thought it might be interesting as well to test a regular, that is steel framed 1911 while I was at it. There are some benefits to a steel frame 1911 for sure. And yes, the market has changed. It is early 2011, well, coming up on mid 2011 when I'm filming this. The Ruger SR 1911 is announced being produced. I think that's going to be a great 1911. Ruger does great work. Remington has one out there. I've heard mixed results on that one. And there's some other offerings too. But my focus is going to be right here on this gun, which I am happy to report is not being discontinued by Smith & Wesson, if my information is correct. Because it is a California skewed gun. That is SKU. It's on their, I guess, DOJ approved list, and I guess Smith is going to continue to make this particular older style 1911. I say older style because um, they have the E series out now, the enhanced versions of their 1911, which I think have a lot of cool stuff to them. Chamfered recessed mu muzzle, uh, they have fish scale scallop serrations on the slide, round butt carry frame in one version, that's kind of cool larger extractor as opposed to this one you know kind of from their performance center I'm talking the E-series here titanium firing pin they put that in there because they got rid of the firing pin safety and the firing pin block that this gun has alright I don't want to spend too much time on the E-series uh, you know I might make reference to it as we go along look at the features of this gun my point though is this is still an outstanding 1911 if you can find it in the used market for a good price, I would not hesitate buying it right off the bat. I wouldn't. Now, California guys, if you can buy it at your, your, gun, sh uh, your gun shop, do it. This is the same gun you saw me rocking in the Eat Lead drill when we tested uh, the KSG shotgun and I hosted Caltech coming down, testing all their guns. Well, nothing fancy, why didn't you run you know, a Caltech pistol? I wanted to run this gun. One, because I love firing it. Way love it. It was just a fun gun to shoot. It's nice. accurate, proven in the video there. We'll talk about that in a sec. It is just a joy to shoot. Oh man, love it. Let's get on the ball. Uh, I'm going to try to crank through this review. Philosophy of use, size, weight, firepower are all contained in my 1911 philosophy of use video annotated in the upper right. Check that out. I talk uh, in general terms about these considerations, uh, which I think is kind of interesting. If you're into 1911s, I'm not going to say that I cover every base in that video. I don't. It's pretty much impossible to do that. 
and it's from my perspective and by the way I'm always learning and progressing and my perspective on the 1911 type may, may change full sized full weight wait a minute none fancy we thought you liked only lightweight guns this sucker's 41 ounces with a magazine in there that's not true if you do say that you haven't been listening to my videos because in the 1911 POU vid I told you that a steel framed 1911 has a lot of benefits perhaps in the philosophies of use and I'll just hit this briefly as a range gun an informal competition gun just like you saw me running in the eat lead drill a steel frame 1911 is going to be quicker to get back on target softer to shoot more pleasant when it's handling the 45 ACP cartridge and the weight is really not an issue because you're not hiking forever you don't have a huge LBE system lots of other weight up to a 90 pound combat loadout in which case I would say a steel frame 1911 is a really poor choice but as a range gun a recreational gun this is an, a perfect choice great choice for home defense as well because we're not carrying around forever you know and by the way as I've said before a home defense gun should have a rail on it that's another reason I love this one it's a railed stainless steel frame by the way the E series equivalent is model 108 411 okay so it's kind of the upgraded version of this I don't think those upgrades are going to make it shoot any better any more accurately I'm just saying I if it does I think it's an outstanding gun but I was so pleased with the performance of this model now, I, don't, I don't know how much it can be improved when it comes to actual shooting you know second kind of cool where you just like the features you like the looks of the scallop serrations on the slide the grips the other enhancements that they've done okay I can see that enough on philosophy of use weight balance and feel talked about that firepower same as it always has been eight rounds again this is a little bit echoing that POU video by the way these are the ACT magazines I think I spoke wrong in the 108 296 review made in Italy very similar to Mechgar they're excellent they are the OEM magazine for the gun you're going to get you get two of them as well other magazines I used during the evaluation were the Chip McCormick's Power Plus I noted no problems with those whatsoever and just like you saw in the Eat Lead Drill Kimber 10 round mags and I love these mags um, the reason I run the 10 round mags is because of the rounds count in the drills that I create out there usually we're doing strings of five and it's just easier doing this as opposed to you know doing eight plus one then I have a awkward loadout sometimes just like you saw in those videos your rounds count is going to get screwed up you're going to be reloading anyhow whatevs Let's talk about the features of the 108293, starting with the frame. Forged stainless steel frame, American made in Holton, Maine. Hope I'm saying that right, guys. In their revamped 1911 facility. Look at the low profile rail to begin with. There's lots of rails, like I said before, on 1911s, which are dicked. They're just not done properly. They're too big, they're too bulky, and they prevent them going into the holster. If you notice those videos, you saw this one sliding into the Serpa holster, locking into the Serpa holster with this rail with no problems. You can see some wear and tear there due to the Serpa. Normal. Badge of honor. Satin finish throughout that frame. And the slide for that matter. Bead blasted, if you will. Good looking. Kind of undercut under the trigger guard here. Vertical striations on the front strap. And then, of course, the mainspring housing has standard. Uh, checkering there. I love the frame. Really love the option to put a light on it. Light, laser, whatever you want. The magwell also talking about the frame. Beveled just like we saw on the model 108 296. All the Smiths are like this. It's not an aggressive bevel but it's you know it works. Um, the barrel itself is also forged. Here's a difference between this version and the E-Series. E-Series is now going to be chamfered and it's going to be flush with a barrel bushing. Um, kind of a nice aesthetic thing. Does it really matter when you get to shooting it? I highly, highly doubt it. You know, guys might like the E-Series because it has, you know, the vertical, whatever you want to call them, serrations, striations on the, on the top to theoretically minimize, I don't know, reflection. Excuse me. Um, I would like them too, to be honest with you. 
But this, again, in practical shooting is when you're really going to evaluate a gun. I didn't notice any problems at all in all types of weather conditions. And no, it wasn't just during the eat lead drill. I've been shooting this gun pretty heavily for the last six months, both at the range, solo shooting expeditions. The plot will thicken here in a little bit. I'll tell you about that. Um, slide. Uh, what am I going to say? The um, Serrations right here. They're now fish scale types, kind of like they had in the Performance Center 1911s forever. I don't mind the standard ones right here. Okay, do I ever use the front ones? No, I do not. I doubt anybody does. Keep your hands away from the muzzle. That's what I say. I hear that those fish ones provide great traction. I'm just not totally digging the looks. I like the classic looks of this one a little bit better. Okay, I know you guys may differ in that. Extractor. Thinner variety. That means it sucks, right? Nothing fancy? Uh, not my opinion. The new E-Series does have a beefier extractor. Again, hearkening back to performance center modifications. I didn't find any problems with this one. Okay, I want to tell you a little, little uh, caveat here. But in my shooting of both jacket and hollow point, not a lot. Full metal jacket, hundreds of rounds. I didn't see any issues with it. There's your scalloping on the... Chamfering I, sh chamfering, I should say, on the slide. It's more aggressive now in the E-Series. But again, I just, do you see any dings on there? Do you see any interferences? Keep this in mind. Uh, Smith & Wesson, just like all the gun companies, love Smith & Wesson, by the way, they're in the business to sell guns. The 1911 market is very hotly contested, even more so now that Ruger's come out with their SR-1911. And Smith & Wesson's just trying to differentiate their product on the shelf so they can sell more guns. So if they make it look more unique with a fish scale, scalloping on the, the slide, different grips, then they have a different presentation. Maybe it will attract more buyers. Okay, but while I'm telling you this because I don't want you to think that it necessarily trans translates into, how shall I say, a vastly superior gun. Okay, uh, marginally better, maybe. I don't know, I'd have to see. The barrel bushing is standard. Takedown is standard as a 1911. The sights, I think, I'm trying to remember what I said in that other 1911 PD review, but the only downside on these sights, I like them. They're three dot variety. They're non adjustable. They're fixed. Um, I didn't have any problems with them, obviously, in Eat Lead Drill, connecting with those FAR targets. Uh, but if you do want to swap them out, the milling on Smith & Wesson slides is just a little bit different. So there's not a huge variety of sights that you can slam on there. Okay, keep that in mind. Uh, I love the sights as they are. Don't really have any plans to swap these out. This is probably going to be a workhorse in the Nut & Fancy project for some time to come. Safety lever, much improved over the 1911 PD. And throughout the Smith & Wesson 1911 series, they use a variety of safety catches. I like this one because it's profiled with no sharp edges and it's not ambi. Single side, yes, I'm right-handed. If you're lefty, you may not like that. Easy enough to put an ambi safety on it. And I think even Smith & Wesson will retrofit it for you if that's the case. Uh, love that safety catch. And by the way, safety check gun, of course. It has a more positive detent than that model 108296. This is a very important attribute in a 1911 because it's real easy, at least for me, to accidentally, my grip, pop that safety up on, and next thing I know I can't pull the trigger. That's kind of embarrassing. Been there, done that. Grip safety is excellent, has the raised hump like we've come to expect. Spring pressure on disengaging it is not overly strong, kind of like we saw in that Taurus 1911. It was a little bit too much. Commander style, skeletonized hammer, no problems with that. Mag release, perfectly executed. Love that mag release. Not too, I don't know, not too aggressive. Sticks out just about right. Again, these are all things you're going to reveal in somewhat stressed practical shooting. Somewhat, I really stress that. Not overly stressed. The trigger. Okay, the E-Series is touted to have a much better trigger nowadays than this one does. Um, one of the criticisms, and I think it's valid of the older, I shouldn't say older, but these original Smith & Wesson 1911s, is there's a little bit of free play in the triggers, up, down, maybe side to side. I don't see that to be a problem. I really never 
noticed it. The only time I notice it is when I'm fondling the gun tabletop like this. And then I can go, oh yeah, I guess there is some, maybe some rattle in there. The E-Series improves that. Okay, the fitting to the frame is much more precise. They came up with a way um, to hand fit it without taking a lot of man hours and supposedly resulting in a really good trigger. Okay, awesome trigger if you will. Let's test this one though, okay? Um, okay, again, safety checked. Safe direction. Here comes, for the first time on Nettin' Fancy TV, huh, trigger pull scale analog variety. Okay, so let's see. I think you guys are going to be a little bit impressed with the trigger out of box on this 108293. Huh. Just over five pounds. Let's try it again. I tried it earlier and it was more like four and three quarters. Let me get on the trigger pad where I'm supposed to be. There we go. Right there. About four and three quarters is what my previous pulls were coming up with. Point being, it has an outstanding trigger. This model does. Uh, now, every 1911 in a lot of ways is going to be an individual, right? This gun's no different. You might have a little bit more, a little bit less. I highly doubt less, but um, very happy with this trigger pull. I bring that up to contrast it against the E-Series, which I think also, from what I've been hearing from very competent voices, has an excellent trigger as well. Less free play, of course, but this is no slouch. Okay, and when we talk about accuracy, that trigger is very critical. When we talk about rate of fire, the trigger is critical. We'll pick that up here in just a second. How about those grips? I love the wood grips on these. At first, I was like, wow, that's, those are kind of bright. Here we're getting into second kind of cool aesthetics, what, what we like in our guns, how we want them to look. And uh, I, was, I really wasn't too sure about them. But the more I looked at the gun, I was like, that's a handsome gun. And I wouldn't replace the grips, which is kind of unusual for me for a 1911 because oftentimes, I think like most 1911 guys, we like to replace the grips. Maybe it's for color, maybe it's for traction. And I will say these wood grips, I'm not really sure of the wood. They look just like the, that wood that Ruger's using on the 2245. Talking about the grip panel, 2245. Great traction though. Love it. Might be a little bit wide in circumference for some real easy retrofit is to put on slim paneled grips if that's what you want by the way full size guide rod on this 1911 I don't have an issue with it and yes there are some departures in the Smiths from the John Moses Browning design like I've talked about before one of them is of course the full length guide rod does it um, give you better accuracy I don't think so um, there's you know the traditional guide rod that you know, Moses Browning, John Moses Browning put in, works great. Um, but I don't mind it. It's, it's not a big deal. I really don't care. I just want the gun to be reliable and I want it to be accurate. And I'm not a 1911 purist. I'm just not. That goes for the external extractor too. Some guys say, well, the original 1911 did not have an extractor on it. I know. The Browning High Power did though, right? Also a Browning design. Just saying. Ergonomics are excellent overall with the gun. Now the weight is a good thing and a bad thing when we talk about ergonomics. Um, if you have perhaps a female shooter, perhaps a, a, a kid who's shooting this gun, it might be a little bit heavy for them. They may not enjoy it. They may have a hard time staying on target with, uh, for a long time. I find that the 41 ounce weight stabilizes the sights and makes it recover, just like I said earlier, a little bit quicker, getting it back on target. Again, all these elements I talked about, the grips, the Ford striations here, checkering on the mainspring housing, combined to make a very comfortable 1911. I'll tell you what, it's not like anything groundbreaking. There's all kinds of 1911s that are along this line, all kinds of great brands. But remember, we're looking at a very aggressive price point for this gun. Jumping down to value, I'll sing it right now, uh, $875 for a stainless steel, forged frame, American-made railed 1911. That Ruger, at least the first one they're coming out with, is not railed. I suspect they're going to have a railed version later to compete with this gun. Meanwhile, Smith & Wesson is going to be selling a lot of 108 303s. Alright, I screwed that up. Yeah, that's it. 108 303s. I hope I was saying the number right throughout the video. If not, I'll annotate it. Alright, accuracy. 
cruising along. Um, a lot of shooting I did on this gun was on steel. I showed you that in the Eat Lead videos. I might roll some more in this video to show you. Um, and I'll tell you what, that one 40-yard target that we were shooting in the Eat Lead drill, that's tough. Under stress after running a little bit, that mini torso plate, you better have your fundamentals squared away to connect with it no matter what handgun you're shooting. And again, this, this gun did superb with it. Superb. I was going to run another gun that day, but I was having such a blast with this 1911. I was like, no, I'm just going to run this. Even PFI dude's like, well, aren't, you know, why don't you run XD or you know whatever else I brought that day? He's like, I'm just like, no. I knew the tabletop review was coming up, and I wanted more data too. And all of it was extremely impressive, if you ask me. But if we have to look at paper, it goes something like this. I'm going to start off with my worst groups. And I was shooting, what, MagTech? No, this is PMC. That's an embarrassing group. Not very good. That's from the bench, by the way, 25 yards. This gun right here. Okay, and then I shot this one. Oh, that's a little bit better. Three shot group at 1.8 inches. A little bit of horizontal stringing, but still, that's a rocking group. Then we got this one right here. I was rushing in this one. Darkness falling in. That's a very unimpressive group. What, five inches on that? That's the MagTech FMJ. Rushed in the dark. Then we got this one right here, 108, 303, nice. Got a flyer up there though. If it wasn't for that, it's a 2.7 inch or 2.75 inch group. I'm not a great bench shooter at 25 yards using sights. I'm just not, I'm more of a, I don't know, practical, tactical shooter. Here's a nice group, 2.5 inches. That's with MacTech as well. Uh, I've had some targets out here with JHPs. I forget what it was. I think it's Hornady's, and they were tighter than this. Lost them. That's what you can expect out of the gun. All good 1911s, we're told, should shoot two to three inches. That's what you can get out of this one. Reliability. Um, it wasn't 100% at first. I told you the plot thickens. Here we go. Uh, basically, it came to slide to frame fit. It was very tight. And I noticed a delayed um, going into battery with this particular gun. Uh, and I shot a lot. Shot like 150 rounds through it. It was still every so often failing to go into battery. Kind of a kerchunk type uh, situation. And so guess what? Like I recommend to you, I sent it back to Smith & Wesson. I said, hey, here's what's going on. Please fix this gun. Replace it if you will, and they sent this gun back and they totally took care of it. Smith & Wesson's uh, service is stellar. It really is. You hear that from a lot of different quarters. It's absolutely true. They did such a great job with it. Uh, zero malfunctions after it returned from Smith & Wesson. Okay, 100% reliability. Both with jacket at hollow point. I think I shot 230 grains. A couple, I say a couple, like 20 rounds of 185s. It was great. I wish I could have tested it more, but honestly, my ammo bills here are so skyrocketing. That's all I put through it. Um, but I suspect you'll be very happy with reliability as well. If you get an issue, just like I did, send it back to Smith & Wesson. Lifetime service policy with your 1911 from Smith. Smoking. By the way, all other manufacturers have issues like that. Ruger does. Glock does. Even SIG has problems. Springfield. So don't you know? point out Smith & Wesson as being the only one accessories. I uh, talked about the sights already, how it's going to be a little bit more difficult to find um, sights that will fit on there. They're, they are out there and I think there's even some tritium options out there. I talked about that in the previous review. Accessories are all about the 1911. I mean, if you do not like anything on this gun, grips, trigger, hammer, safety, replace it. You know, the way I look at it, though, is I don't want to have to replace it. I want it to be squared away out of the box. You know what I'm saying? That I don't want to spend money. I don't want to spend time in having to change something as it comes out of box. I will tell you, the trigger as it is, breaking at four and three quarter pounds, having shot this extensively in tactical style of shooting, I ain't doing nothing with it. Uh, I think there might be... Uh, a lot of dudes out there that lighten their 1911 triggers up too much and I personally have a problem with those in uh, again I hate to say stressful shooting but it is I mean we're running and gunning you're getting your heart rate up it is somewhat stressed shooting 
uh, I cook rounds off when I don't want to cook them off with a trigger that's super light. I, you know, just like, you know, sadly, Missing's gun. It was a, the commander sized uh, Scanium Frame 1911. He has a really light trigger, and I was popping rounds without having meaning to. Uh, but back to accessories, you can change everything that you don't like. All the holsters will fit. Again, very low profile rail. Value, competitive options. I kind of already talked about that. Right? Uh, Ruger, I think, is going to be an awesome gun. It is stiff competition with this one. I think this might be a little bit more proven, a little bit more perfected because it's been out a long time. Yes, I got one that had a too tight slide to frame fit. By the way, that's like perfect now. Just a very slight movement there, not much at all. Oh, and I forgot to show you this too. Nice deep throat on the 1911s from Smith too. I, I'm not going to break it down and I'm not going to talk about field strip because it's standard 1911. Lots of other 1911 options out there, no doubt, and it's all good for us consumers. Digging it. That results in lower prices, more features for the money. Yeah, I'm game. But when you're looking at other 1911s in this POU, I'm talking steel framed 1911s, keep this in mind. One, the price point, remember around the 850, maybe 875 price point. And again, this is a 100% American made 1911 with a forged frame, forged slide, forged barrel, stainless steel, low profile rail. Again, I think Ruger will come out with the same thing to compete with this gun. And also the Model 108411 from Smith & Wesson. And that's good. But this is a proven commodity and it represents, I think, in the 1911 world, very high value. It rocks. Proven in the Nut & Fancy project with lots and lots of shooting. Probably lots more to come. Lifetime service policy from Smith & Wesson as a range gun and formal competition gun. You ain't gonna go wrong with a 108303. And I think it's just a glitch that it's still being made since it takes so much effort for the manufacturers to get on the California DOJ list. Smith & Wesson is just like, hey, let's just keep making that. That way we can serve the California market. That's a great thing because I think it's a great gun. I think the E-Series will be also excellent to tell the truth. And maybe one day I'll test one here in the Net & Fancy project. There you have it. 108 303 is the model number for this one. Stainless steel, 1911 from Smith & Wesson. Ranking really high on my likability factor. Thanks for watching, Nothing Fancy. Five, hit, 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 one more, there it is.